Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak, Jesus. Speak, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, Jesus. Somebody be obedient. Come on. Everybody lift your hands. We're just we're gonna be still before the Lord for just a minute. If you have something, release it. If you're unfamiliar with this, we believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, through prophetic utterances. And I believe there's still yet something that needs to be said. So just be obedient. Be obedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we seal your word. We seal your word with our faith and with the praise. We seal your word. We thank you for speaking to us today. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you receive that word today, just put your hands together. Give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning. And uh, man, what an awesome day. Man, I, I could have just went home after I baptized Jerry, man. I, man it was just awesome. And uh, I'm excited today. I know God's got something for each and every one of us in the house today. And if you're visiting with us, welcome. We'd like to welcome you as our guest today. And if you are uh, looking for a home church, we pray your search will be over. But let me also encourage you not to judge any church you visit based on one service. Because uh, especially around here, God's liable to do something different week by week by week, right? And so, uh, uh, and so we always say, man, if you're searching for a church, give that church at least four to six weeks in a row. Because that gives you time to get their heart and their DNA and see what it is that God is doing. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have off days. Hey, man, I pray that I don't miss it today. Praise the Lord. But if you're, if you're searching, we pray that, uh, that, that God will uh, speak to you to be a part of our family. Amen? All right, turn with me to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 21. Joshua chapter 21. Last week... Last week, we began to deal with the promises of God, and we really talked about the promises themselves, right? That if God gives you a promise, and especially if it's through a prophetic word, then uh, it, is, it is what? Anybody? It's an announcement, right? Of what? God's intentions. So when God gives you a word, when He makes a promise to you, it's not even so much that God's going to do it. It is God announcing that he wants to do it, right? What is required, if you remember from last Sunday, what is required for the promises God makes to be fulfilled? Your faith and obedience, your human agreement, right? So there's no such thing as, well, if it's God's will, it'll be done. 
God's will is only accomplished when man's will agrees with God's will. Are you with me? But today, I don't want to talk so much about the promise as I want to talk about the God who makes the promise. Amen? Because how many understand it's not just about what He promised, it's about the, the God that He is. And if He's the God that the Bible says He is, then it's not just a promise, it's going to come to pass. Amen? So look at, look at Joshua 21 with me, verse number 43. The Lord gave Israel all the land that he promised to give to their fathers. In other words, he did what he said. They took possession of it and lived in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he swore to their fathers. Not a man among their enemies stood before them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Here we go, verse 45. Not a single word of all the good things the Lord had spoken to the children of Israel failed. They all came to pass come on look at somebody say not a single word of all that God has said will fail in your life all will come to pass come on if you believe that shout amen amen I want to begin today with uh, with an announcement something that we should already know to be true and that is just simply this there is no God like our God (laughs) <laughs> there just is no other God like our God. There's a song, ain't no God like Jehovah, amen? There's no God like our God. You can go over to the tomb of Buddha, guess what? He's still in there. You can go to the tomb of Muhammad, guess what? He's still in there. You can go to the tomb of Harry Krishna if you want to, guess what? He's still in in there you can go to the tomb of joseph stalin that said that this book was a lie guess what he's still in there but if we went over to israel today come on somebody if we went over to israel to the tomb of jesus guess what he's not in there amen it's empty matter of fact matter of fact not only is it empty it's a museum because what else you going to do with an empty tomb huh There's no God like our God. Our God cannot lie. He cannot lie. The very moment He says it, it begins to exist. He cannot lie. And He cannot fail. He cannot fail. It is not God that has let you down. It is man that has let you down. Our God cannot lie. Our God cannot fail. And He will perform His Word. I believe that. How about you? Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. And everybody understands the significance of Hebrews, right? Like the man's supposed to make the coffee. Sorry. Hebrews, anyway. Uh, Hebrews 13, verse 8. So I'm just trying to get you all to lighten up a little bit. Okay. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. I was going to read this out of the Amplified, but I figured that was too loud. Hebrews, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8. Jillian said, so I said to Jillian yesterday, I said, you know, I said, tomorrow I've got a really awesome message and, and um, it's going to be real serious. She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, I'm not going to be funny at all. She said, well, I predict you'll fail. <laughs> so if you hate those jokes, it's her fault. She, she spoke it over me. Okay. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same when? Yesterday, today, and forever jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever some people misquote this when they are fighting against change because he's the same all the time but jesus is not the same in his methods he's the same in his character he's the same in his power if he healed then he'll heal now if he delivered then he'll deliver now if he saved then he'll save now if he drove out cancer then he'll drive out cancer now amen 
He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He's the God that's made you the promise. Amen. It is not a politician that has made us the promise. It is not... It is not... It, oh. it is neither the donkey or the elephant that has made the promise. It's the lamb that has made the promise. Because guess what? When a Democrat makes a promise, he often breaks the promise. When it, just before you say amen, when a Republican makes a promise, he often will break his promise. Amen. But when Jesus makes a promise, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he made the promise, he will surely bring it to pass. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. The God that we serve is, is a good God, and he's the God that promised. He is constant. He's constant, never changing. He's consistent. He's reliable, right? He, he's constant. He's consistent. He's reliable. Watch this. He's trustworthy. He's trustworthy. And his power has not changed. The God who promised, he's constant, he's consistent, he's reliable, and he's trustworthy. You can believe the promise not because of the promise, but because of the one who made the promise. You know, I'm going to give you an example. We talk about this all the time here. So I'm going to give you an example. You know, if you ask my children, if, if dad says we're going out for ice cream, they begin to believe we're going out for ice cream because they understand the one that promised, only promised because he wants ice cream. I can't get it. Can I, get any, can I get any help from any dads in this room right now? I see some people elbowing, right? But now if my, if, if my wife makes a promise, such as ice cream, we are not met with, yes! We are met with, are you serious? We were out running errands with Jillian. It was, the boys were home. It was just me, my wife, and Jillian. We're out running errands, and we got done at 5 o'clock. Five o'clock. My wife, uncharacteristically, said to me, quietly, hey, Cold Stone's just down the street. Why don't we just take Jillian for a treat? She won't be expecting it. I said, she won't be expecting it? Like, are you serious? Because for I've been hanging out with this girl for 25 years, and for 25 years, all I've ever heard, even before she was my wife, was it'll ruin our dinner. I can't get no, some of, some of y'all men are scared to say amen right now. You're scared. I've always been met with that. It'll ruin, it'll ruin dinner. We can't eat ice cream at 5. We're trying to eat at 5, 30, 6 o'clock. No, this is not, not the good time. This is not the right time, Tim. I don't care. It's not the right time. That's usually what I'm met with. Do I have anybody that has any compassion for me and understands my, <laughs> thank you, Greg. Exactly. So I was like, are you serious? And she goes, yeah. She goes, she won't be, so, she won't be expecting it. And so I, we get in the car, and I said, Jillian, we're going to go for a little, another little errand. She goes, I thought we were going home to get dinner. I said, we, we are. Mom wanted to make a pit stop. So I pull over. How many know where Cold Stone is? How many don't know what Cold Stone is? Raise your hand. You are under a pastoral obligation this week. <laughs> if you want to know what heaven smells like, walk into Cold Stone. Am I, can, am I right? right? Jillian says every time, oh, this must be what heaven's like. The aroma of waffle cones baking in the air. Oh, it's so good. And so I pull in, and you know where AT&T is, and then Cold Stone's right there, right? So we pull in, and Joan's like, what are we doing? I said, we're doing an errand. And so she thought, she knew we're going to stores, she knew what was going on. Then I take the left turn, and I park in front of Cold She goes, what are we doing here? I said, Mom said we're going to get ice cream. She goes, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. <laughs> no. And then, and I, then Kimberly goes, yeah, we'll, 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 get a, we'll get an ice cream. And Julian's like, but it's after 5 o'clock, right? So often, watch this. So often the issue is not the promise in your life. The issue is your ability to believe the character and the power of, by which the promise is coming through. 
Because maybe you don't know that God is a healing God. Maybe you don't know that God is a delivering God. Maybe you don't know that God desires to do this in your life. So when God gives you a promise, you are even met with, yes, Lord, or, huh? Right? And you end up looking like a 17-year-old looking at her mama like she got three heads. And then I'm like, shh, shh. Don't say another word. Just go in, order your waffle cone, and let's just be quiet. We get home, and me being the good dad that I am, I said, boy, Josiah, you missed it. He's like, what? And I said, well, you know, we went to do yada, yada, yada. He goes, yeah. And I said, remember, you said you didn't want to go. And I'm like, sometimes you need to go for things you don't enjoy, because there might be something you do enjoy waiting on you. Y'all, y'all better hear me today. He's like, what happened? I said, we went to Cold Stone. No, I said, it was mom's idea. Pfft, right. <laughs> but if we can remember that God is constant, He's consistent, He's reliable, and He's tr- trustworthy, and His power has not changed, we will be Begin not just to believe the promise, but we will now start to look for the promise. To look for the promise. Come on, say this with me. This just might be the day. I go from believing to walking in my promise. Man, let me tell you right now. This just might be the day. This just might be This just might be the day that you get out of waiting and on into walking that you get out of one day into what's happening right now in this moment i propose to you it's not even the promise he made it's our inability to believe in the one who promised amen because guess what if god really promised there's not a devil in hell that can stop it no sir no sir but I need to warn you, I need to warn you, because I, I read something, you know, and you've heard me complain about social media before, but I read something on social media, and I completely disagreed with it, and if you posted it or shared it or whatever, that's okay, there's grace for you, don't be offended. But I completely disagreed with it, and that's why I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to explain why I disagree with it. And the post said, if God said it, nobody can stop it. And I disagree with that. Why? Because I have the power to stop it. Nobody externally has the power to stop God's blessing in your life. No devil has the power to stop God's blessing in your life. No relative. Amen. No child. No grandchild. No neighbor. No boss. No husband. No wife, no politician has the power to stop God's promise in your life. But there is somebody in your mirror that has the power to stop God's promise in your life. You and I must decide I'm going to have the promise or I'm going to forfeit the promise. And brother, let me tell you, if you will agree with God, There's nobody that can stop the promise. Amen? Come on, say it with me. Nobody Nobody other than me me can stop this promise. promise. Last week, I mentioned something to you, and I, I want to expand on it a little bit. Last week, we asked the question, won't he do it? And our response is, yes, he will. Won't he do it? Won't won't he? Won't he save your family won't he restore brokenness won't he won't he mend the fences won't he won't he fix it yeah he will he will he will but man's agreement must line up with god's agreement right our agreement must come into subjection to his word and if we would just get in line he will surely do it he will come through for you i will not leave you nor forsake you. I will come through 
I will come through for you. I won't, I won't abandon you. I didn't, the old, old folks used to sing this when I was a kid. He didn't bring me this far to leave me now. Come on. He did, I, I, didn't, I didn't go through all the hell I went through to get right here just to quit now. I didn't survive everything I survived just so that God can change his mind now. God ain't fickle. He don't change his mind. He don't, he don't give and then take it back from you. That's not the God that you serve. The God that you serve gives gifts. The God that you serve gives blessing. The God that you serve heals and delivers and sets free. But you don't understand, Pastor Tim, they said this to me. I don't care what they said. I care about what he said. Are you with me right now? Nobody externally can stop your promise. If God said it, he will surely do it. Come on, say, say God's going to come through for me. God's going to come through for me. God's, God's going to answer my cry. God's going to, he's going to fix this. Amen. He's going to fix this. And as soon as you start realizing that your mess isn't somebody else's fault. As soon as you realize we've got to stop blaming and take responsibility, God will fix it. God will fix it. You know, uh, if, you, if you bring a grill to my house, I'm just going to preach about what I know. If you bring a grill to my house that you have messed up yourself and you're like, Pastor Tim, help me, okay? I'll be more than happy to help you fix it. I'll be more than happy to replace burners if you've got a gas grill. I'll be more than happy to change vents and, and, and smokestacks and anything if you've got a charcoal grill or a smoker or whatever. I'll be more than happy to fix your piece of equipment. But the problem is, if while I'm trying to fix what you've messed up, if you're still messing up what I'm trying to fix, I'm just going to, you have at it, brother, have at it, right? If I have a piece of equipment, let's say it's a snowblower, and it's a small engine, but I don't know nothing about fixing those small engines, and I'm like, hey, Mr. Quick Parts, I got me here something I need you to take a look at because I don't know what's happened to it and I, I can't fix it and I don't know what to do with it because this is not my lane to stay in. Y'all know what I'm saying? So then I take it over to Greg and I'm like, Greg, I need you to, to fix it whether snowblower, lawnmower, doesn't matter. And then he said, all right, well, let me look at it, Pastor Tim. And I'm like, okay, go ahead and take it. Take it. Now fix it. Fix, well, hold on, let me show you something, Greg. You see, if you... Now, if I won't take my hands off of the thing, the one has the knowledge and the skill to fix. Is it getting fixed? Absolutely not. Something in your life is broken. And God is the only one that can fix it. And do you know what you have to do in order for God to fix it? You've got to... Let it go, let it go. You got to let it go, baby. You got to take your hands off. God, I want you to fix this broken relationship. Then you've got to take your hands off. And you've got to learn how to say this. God, they're your problem now. They're your problem now. Because the more I try to fix them, the worse it gets. How many know that's to be true? Amen. So, number one, God will come through for you. Number two, He will not fail His word. He will not fail His word. You've got to learn, number three, listen to this, walk in the confidence of your faith. To walk in the confidence of faith, you must do two things. Number one, ignore your feelings. And number two, trust the promises. In order to walk in faith, right? Not, not walk in the natural, because when you walk in the natural, all you can see is what's wrong. Like this is missing, this is lacking, this is broken, this is messed up, this is jacked up, this is, this is, this is just awful. But if all we're looking at is what is awful, then we begin to believe the lie of our feelings. And our emotions will lie to us. Emotions will get all up in your inner ear and tell you, God's never going to change this. Give up hope. Quit praying. Quit believing. 
Quit expecting, because it's never going to change. Especially if the more you pray, the worse they get. Have you ever noticed that? And the more I pray, and the more I intercede, and the more I press in after God, the worse the situation gets. And, I, and here's where we land. I don't know what else to do. And the issue isn't even the brokenness. The issue, watch this, is that we can't control it. And God has to be able to control it. Right? We want God to drive the vehicle, but we're sitting over there with the air brake. Right? Or we're sitting in the back seat. Right? Judah used to have a real bad problem with this when he was seven, eight years old. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to pick on him a little bit, but I'm going to show you something. We were at a, we were at a party from one of our, our church leaders in Ohio. And we left. We've been to their house many times. I had discovered a new road that can take me home to equal amount of distance, and I hate going the same way every single time. That's partly what I hate about living in Jeff City. Same thing every day. So we left. And Judah had gotten where he had memorized everything. And so, Mr. Chatterbox himself says, okay, now we're getting to the stop sign. Okay, now daddy's going to turn right. And I did. Now we're going to get to the light. Now daddy's going to go straight. And then after we go straight, we're going to go to the next light. And then we're going to turn left. He had memorized the whole route. So I get to the light, the first light, and I turned left. I did not go straight. And he lost it. Where, 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 where are we going? Home. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. I said, we are going home. No, this is not the way. I said, this is the way. This is not the way to go home. You went the wrong direction, Daddy. I said, hold up. Check your tone. And he wouldn't quit. This is, Mom, tell him. And she goes, honey, Dad knows. No, no, this is all wrong. <laughs> Lost it. Meltdown. And then I said, son, how many steering wheels are in this car? One. How many gas pedals are in this car? One. I said, how many brakes are in this car? One. So actually, there's two. One's an emergency brake, but I don't want to teach you about that right now. Anyway. I said, you need to know, I know something you don't know. Watch this. So then we get to a street, he recognized, he goes, oh. And then, you know how kid, little kids do. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm sorry, Daddy, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know. I said, I know you didn't know. And that night, we put him to bed, and I'm sitting there, and I was not laughing. I didn't think it was funny. I was quite annoyed. Like, you're not going to be seven and tell me how to drive. Y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I get into bed, and I was praying, and God said to me, and he goes, you know how upset you got when a child told you how to go? I said, uh-huh. And he goes, then why won't you just trust me to drive your future? Because we know where we're at. And we know what he promised. But we're wanting him to go straight. And he went ahead and took a left-hand turn. And we begin all this self-doubt and self-affliction because this shouldn't have happened. But maybe, maybe while we're yelling at God that we call praying. Which is not praying, it's what? Complaining. Maybe God knows there's more than one way to get you from the land of promise to the land of fulfillment. Some of you have been angry at God because things aren't the way that you thought they would be. And it's not that God isn't in control. It's that he took a turn when you thought he should have went straight. 
Are you with me? You've got to ignore your feelings. You've got to stop empowering other people to affect your peace. They can't affect your peace. They can't can't rob you of your joy. Because at the end of the day, either God fixes them or they won't get fixed at all because you and I can't do nothing with them. Right? Because let me tell you, when I was driving that night, there wasn't nothing me or my wife could do to help Judah. Was there? No, not a daggum thing. There's nothing we could do to help him out. He had to discover something for himself that my father knows better than I do. God knows better than you and I. And he will, come on, say it with me, he will perform his promise. Number four, you've got to learn to silence every voice that does not amen God's promises. Just because somebody's close to you doesn't mean they're speaking faith to you. And you've got to learn how to silence voices that aren't speaking to the fulfillment of your promise. And if people are pouring fuel on the fire of your frustration, you've got to learn how to say, I love you, but you can't talk to me about this anymore. It's not rude, is it? It's not rude. It, 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 can, <laughs> it can get rude. But it's not rude to say, if you can't speak into this, I can't allow you to speak against it. You know what I mean? I mean, you've got to get to a place where you have to protect your ears because what's going in here is affecting here, and what affects here affects here. Now, all of a sudden, you can't sleep at night, you can't eat, you have no peace, and you can't even enjoy life. And it's not even so much of what's in your heart, it's what you've allowed to come inside your ear that is now stuck in your brain, and what's in your brain is affecting your heart. The peace of God that passes all of your understanding, watch this, will guard your heart and your mind. So when you get to the place where people are speaking negative to you, you've got to learn to say, I love you, but shut up. There's probably a nicer way to say it. I'm trying to help you get my point. Because if you're not, watch this. Because if you're not speaking into my promise, you're speaking death to my promise. Because the power of life and death are what? In the tongue. And if you're not speaking life to my promise, if you're not speaking healing to my promise, then you're also speaking negativity and death. And I can't allow you to talk about this to me. I had a friend who stabbed me in the back. I'll just be honest about it. And we got to a place where forgiveness took place, restoration took place. But I also have to understand there's a difference between forgiving somebody and trusting somebody. You know what I mean? Like if I say, hey, let's play the trust game. Y'all know what the trust game is? That'd be like if I called out Greg and I said, hey, I'm going to fall. You catch me. Right? That's the trust game, isn't it? Y'all know what I'm saying? And then I fall and Greg got distracted. His phone went off. He's like, oh, what's going on? And boom, I hit the floor. Right? But because I love Greg, because my relationship with Greg, I will then forgive Greg. But if you think for a second, (laughs) we ever going to play the trust game again? It's not going to happen. You are under an obligation biblically to forgive every single person. You are under no obligation to ever trust them again for the rest of your life. Why? Because trust is not a gift. Trust is a wage. You've got to earn trust once it's been broken, right? And so to this day, I love him like a brother, and we talk about all sorts of stuff, but in the arena of where he stabbed me in the back and hurt me, I just can't talk to him about that, right? Not all boundaries are bad boundaries. Are you with me? And so not to the point, now the boundary could get so bad I shove him out of my life forever, but I won't do that. He's in my life, but there's certain things I don't allow him access to. Are you with me? Is this helping anybody today at all? Silence every voice. Listen to number five. His word overturns their word. His word overturns their word. 
at the end of the day, it does not matter who doesn't believe in your promise. God's word overturns their word every single time. This is not about other people. This is about you and God. He's the God that made you the promise. And if he made the promise, he will surely bring it to pass. He will surely bring it to pass. God made God has made us some promises that Kimberly and I are standing on. And even when we start to think it's the end of the road and that God is, is finally happening, whoop, no it isn't. So there has to come this time where we have to make a decision. Are we going to trust God and believe the promise? Or are we going to now despair and give up? We got to trust God. We got to trust God. No matter what it is, it might be something financial in your life. It could be something physically. It could be something relationally. It could be any, literally anything in the world. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people say. It only matters what has God said and what are you coming into agreement with. Because if God said it, and I agree with it, it will surely, it will surely, it will surely come to pass. If He said it, I know He's going to do it. There's an old song that uh, we used to sing when I was a teenager in the church. And it was, uh, I, think, I think Kimberly had this soundtrack. I don't r- recall now. Um, but it's a song that said, He'll do it again. Did you sing that? Did you? You have. Pull up the lyrics. I might need you in a second. There's an old song that says, And I know He'll do it again for you. Right? If he did it then, he's going to do it now. God, this is the, it's a simple message, guys. The only thing I need you to hear is God has not changed. He has not changed. He has not changed. Some of you in this room are concerned and worried about people that, that you love that are straying. If God did it then, surely, surely, he'll do it now. If he saved then, he saves now. The devil doesn't have a trap that God doesn't have the rescue plan for. I don't know who this is for, but there is nothing the enemy has set that God doesn't know how to overcome. I'm going to say it like this. The devil ain't got a lock that God don't have the key for. Are you here? Some of you, some of you love some folks that are in a spiritual prison. And you think they're locked up for the rest of their lives. And I'm here to tell you, watch this. God's got the master key to every prison sale in the building. And if he did it then... He'll do it now. If he did it then, he'll do it now. Why? Because your God is the God of miracles. Your God is the God of miracles. The God, watch this, this is, this is, I want to close with this. The God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament. And the God of the New Testament is the God of your present. If the God, if God did something for you 30 years ago, that same God is going to do it right now because he has not changed. He has not changed. Can I give you a This this is crazy. Some of y'all ain't going to believe this. Some of you you ain't going to believe it. I'm going to tell you anyway. But this is crazy. It's just set. My wife said something to me and like something snapped in my belly when she said it, man. Like something, something shifted on the assignment when she said it. So Jillian, almost her whole life, that we know of, has been allergic to cats. Basically, they're dander. I'm allergic to cats too, but it's for different reasons. <laughs> Can we hear it for dogs? Yeah! Okay. Uh, so, so any, anytime we've been around 
found anybody, you know, that we go to somebody's house, they have a cat, and they put the cat away. The cat don't have to be near you. As soon as she only walk in, her eyes would just poof, right? It was awful. So then we've been in a few situations. We went to the zoo around some big cats. But then we've also been in some places where there, where there were people there that had little cats. Even her petting those cats, and not once this whole time has she had an allergy. Not once has her eyes swollen up. Not once. No sneezing, no puffy, no turning red, right? Not, not a sign of it. And I was like, so then I said, so then I said, well, you know, she probably just grew out of it. The man of faith. <laughs> she just grew out of it. And my wife said to me, sitting in the car, she goes, remember when God got on Jillian? When she was on crutches? And she ran across the front of this church? Do you all remember that? Good Friday? Then my wife says to me, is it possible that God also drove out Every allergy to everything going on in her life. Yeah. And I went. And I felt something shift in my belly. I'm not being silly. I'm, just, I'm, I'm serious. I felt something move inside me. Then I was like, I got to resign. My wife's greater faith than me. She should be the pastor. I quit. But thank God for a spouse that will be full of faith and will hear God in ways you can't hear God. Amen. Do I know this for a fact? No, but I believe it. I believe it. Because then we were like, well, some of you know we're, you know, believing God to get out of renting and into owning our own home. So then we're like, well, we can't (coughs) buy any house that they got a cat. It'd be all up in the carpet and stuff. We've got to rip off carpet and lay down floors and Dusty won't give me a good deal. <laughs> and so we took her to a few houses. And on almost every house that she went with us, there's a cat. And my first thought was, well, never mind. There goes this one. And then we just saw a house the other day. And Jillian goes in and, and this cat would not... This cat would not leave her alone. It kept following her everywhere. And she's like, oh, hi, hi. And I'm, and I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at her. I'm like, how you feel? I feel great, right? I feel wonderful. Okay, then we go to this other house, and the cat, you, you know, it was your typical cat. <laughs> and it goes over, and it jumps on the counter in its bed. They had the cat bed on the counter. These people don't deserve for us to buy their house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Joan's like, Dad, look. And I said, how do you feel? She said, I feel wonderful. So she goes over and she pets it. You know, of course, the cat was like, <laughs> she pets it. We leave. Cameron's like, how you feeling? She goes, I feel wonderful. And so we said, you're, you're healed. Completely healed in Jesus' name. You know what she said? We get back to the house. She goes, so, how many know where I'm going now? How many know what's about to say? So, Dad, does this mean we can get a kitten? I said, ask Ollie. Our dog. Ask him if we can get a cat. Amen. And so then we tell Judah, he loses it. I ain't having no cat in my house. And he goes, Well, I'm not going to have nothing to do with the cat. I said, That's the thing you don't know about cats. They don't want nothing to do with you. So listen to me. The God of the Bible is the God of right now. And he has not changed in his power. He has not changed in his character. He has not changed in his ability. And if he said it, he'll do it. Some of you sitting here this morning are proof positive that God will keep his promises. You understand what I'm saying? The fact that I'm here this morning is proof positive that God keeps his promises. Amen. 
So I so my question is, are you just are you gonna go by how things feel, or are you gonna start to believe the word? And will you believe in the character, in the power, in the ability of God that things aren't always going to be as they are? Things will not be as they are right now in this moment in your life. God will bring rest. I hear you, Holy Spirit. God will bring restoration. God will bring restoration. Lift your hands. Stand your feet all over this room. God will bring restoration. Some of you, some of you have some promises, you know, that has to do with something natural. But some of you have some promises in your life that has to do with some things that are more dear to your heart. And I want to pray for you today. Would you lift your hands and just begin to worship God right now? Wait on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God will keep his promise. God will keep his promise. God will keep his promise. He has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. God, God will keep his promise. 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 Will you, you agree with his word? Will you come into alignment with his word? Because God will keep his promise. God will keep his promise. Glory to God. If you're here this morning and you would say, Pastor Tim, please pray for me. I need God to fix something in my life. I need God to touch. I need God to heal. I need God to deliver. I need God to restore. Something is broken. It might be physically, emotionally, relationally. There's something broken that you need God to get in the middle of it right now. The Bible says that Jesus is your mediator. God will get in the middle of it. God will fix it. God will heal it. God will restore it. If that's you, step out from where you're at right now and meet me in this altar. Let me pray with you. Let me join my faith with you right now all over this building, stepping out. Come and receive something from the presence of the Lord today. Hallelujah. 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 